Welcome to Bronze Dad Plays. Today, we're checking out how you can play Final Fantasy with family and friends. Let's dive in. First, what is Final Fantasy? If you need an answer to this one, you've probably been living under a rock, but let's talk about it anyway. Final Fantasy is one of the largest and longest running game franchises in history. Not everyone has played Final Fantasy, of course, and it's not everyone's cup of tea. But for those who enjoy it, this is a franchise known for quality. It started in 1987 as a science fantasy game, and since then, it's had 15 mainline entries. Generally, these are standalone games full of grand adventures across wide open spaces. These are games that take your imagination and explore its depths. But Final Fantasy isn't just known for mainline games. There have been tactical games, racing, third-person shooters, arena fighters, even MMOs. Heck, Final Fantasy has had CGI films, mobile games, manga, fashion lines. Final Fantasy has been all over our world. This makes me think of the XKCD comic about being one of today's lucky 10,000. If you didn't know what Final Fantasy was and you clicked on this video, you're one of the lucky 10,000. But for everyone else, I think you know what I'm talking about at this point. So what makes Final Fantasy so special to us? Final Fantasy is all about its characters. These are deep, engaging stories, typically of epic escapism adventures. You're the one true whatever or the group of heroes. There's always some sort of crystal or something made of crystal that's central to the story and drives the narrative. You're trying to save the world or save the town or maybe just save yourself. These are games that typically rely on gathering a party of dissimilar friends or even enemies coming together for the greater good. These narratives and these worlds have inspired generations of game developers. The modern JRPG has a lot it owes to Final Fantasy. When you play a Final Fantasy game, you understand its themes, its story, its narrative. You understand the visual cues it's trying to get across to you. You understand this general world, and sometimes the world is shared across games. This gives you the feeling of being an insider if you know Final Fantasy. You understand what's going on quicker than the layperson. So I know, I'm not exactly making it sound like a family game here. And at the core, they're not exactly multiplayer games. In fact, they're very, very single player games. Most games are very linear until you unlock an airship or some other way to access the open world. And then after that, most games are about grinding or mini games, preparing for the big fight. It's all about leveling up your characters, enhancing your powers, finding new weapons, so that way you can take on the big bad. But these games all have a very strong and compelling story, as well as a fun gameplay loop. It's not just about going out and slaying some sentient cactuses. It's about knowing the cactar and knowing that they've been in every game in the series. It's about seeing how those characters interact with the enemy and each other. It's about developing the stories of these individuals, even if those stories are only taking place in your own mind. You unlock and discover side quests to expand upon these individual character stories. It's one of the things that makes Mass Effect so beloved. You get to know the characters in this world beyond just those in your party. There's always some guy named Sid who's an engineer. There's always a Moogle who helps you out in some way. These are familiar stories but they're never the same. These are worlds you get to dive into and live in. They take your breath away like the best novels or the most artistic movies. But don't get me wrong, Final Fantasy has tried multiplayer. In Final Fantasy IV or VI, you could assign multiple controllers during battle sequences. In Final Fantasy IX, it could be controlled by two players at the same time. Final Fantasy Tactics on the PSP had co-op missions. You play the single player game up to a certain level, create your parties, and then you could work together to accomplish the largest missions. Final Fantasy XV had a whole game mode called Comrades that ended up breaking off and becoming its own game. Final Fantasy XI was an MMO, but we, we don't talk about Final Fantasy XI. There is light at the end of this long and dark tunnel 
for those looking to experience Final Fantasy with family and friends. Dissidia Final Fantasy NT is an arena fighting game. In this 3v3 third person action combat game, you get to experience and drive large battles full of nostalgic Final Fantasy characters. For fans of Final Fantasy, this is a massive roster of characters. And for those new to the series, it's an arena fighting game that's pretty fun. The art style is beautiful to some and not to others, but no one can doubt that this game is spectacular. Be it spells flying around or swords clashing, there's always something intriguing here, and you're the one controlling that amazing combat narrative. What makes this game so good for friends or family? Well, a free edition. It's free! Certainly to unlock the full roster and every piece of the game, you'll pay money at some point. But if you want to dip your toe into this world of Final Fantasy, this is a great place to start. You may also know Final Fantasy XIV is an MMO. Yes, after it had its own little challenges, it was rebirthed to one of the greatest MMOs of all time. You can have multiple classes on a single character who runs through the overall story. You could play each different class, but share the overall experience with family. Or maybe you want multiple characters. You could even go so far as having multiple accounts so that you can quest and experience this world together, living a digital life as friends or family. People put literally thousands of hours into these games and continue to experience new things as the story expands. To me, there's no better expression of the intention behind the Final Fantasy brand. Everyone knows MMOs are better with friends, and Final Fantasy may just be better with family. The last really exciting thing to look forward to is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered. Yes, this is originally a GameCube game, and is considered a spin-off despite playing very much like a main title game. It's currently being remastered for the Switch. This was a true co-op experience in a frankly cute world. You meet a band of adventurers of different races who have to work together to carry crystals through dungeons and to trees that will refill a life essence to cleanse the world. It's a simple story, it's a cute story, but these characters will be beloved, just like any other in the Final Fantasy brand. Originally, this game used the Game Boy Advance to interact with the GameCube via Link Cable. We have yet to see how this will be incorporated into the Switch, but I imagine the Joy-Cons will be highly successful here. Originally, this game was due at the end of 2019, but it did get delayed until January 2020. And of course, it got further delayed till summer 2020, and with the recent situation, we may expect further delays, but hopefully not too much. I anticipate this will be a great game, and it will be a great game to introduce your friends and family to Final Fantasy. I'm personally very excited for Final Fantasy VII coming out this Friday, and I'll be live streaming it here on YouTube. Watch for Let's Plays to drop soon. This has been Bronze Dad Plays. If you like my content, please be sure to subscribe to stay notified. Have an idea for my next video? Drop it in the comments and I'll be sure to respond. Till next time, see ya.